Welcome, everyone. Uh, today is class one of Return from Exile, and we will be starting with the book of Ezra. For those of you that I told you we were starting in the book of Zechariah, mm -hmm. deepest apologies. <laughs> now you've read two books of the Bible this week instead of one. <laughs> Over the next five weeks, we are going to finish the history of the Old Testament. Is that crazy or what? We started last August, for those of you that have been doing this a while, smack in the middle of the Old Testament with the prophet Samuel and King Saul and King David, and that just went so well that we kept going, and here we are. So in the next five weeks, we're going to bring it up to the time of Jesus. Let's stand and open in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us, fill this room. Fill each and every one of us. Open our hearts and minds to hear from you tonight. Change us. Be with us. Speak through us, Lord. And let us know your love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In return from exile, the Jewish exiles in Babylon return home to Judah. They rebuild the temple, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, rebuild their homes, rebuild their lives. They establish a government and society based on the law of Moses. This was everything they wanted. And yet, along the way, they so often find themselves underwhelmed. This Jewish utopia isn't all it's cracked up to be. They find a promised land that needs rebuilding. More than that, they find infighting, politics, bureaucratic stupidity, arrogance, malice, opposition, apathy, legalism, and as always, sin. It tends to crop up when you're dealing with human beings. Their constant temptation is to keep their heads down, get comfortable, forget their mission. <coughs> Let God fall into the steady background of their lives. They are where they're supposed to be, right? They're back in the promised land, but they still have a mission. Their mission is to rebuild. Love, live, and teach the law of the Lord so they can be that city on a hill, that light to the nations. They are called to prepare the way of the Lord. Now, consider for a moment the Catholic Church. More than a billion people in the world today, stretching all the way back to the apostles and to Jesus himself. It's the place to be. But how often do we find our earthly promised land underwhelming? Do we ever find politics, arrogance, apathy, legalism, sin? Our constant temptation is to keep our heads down, get comfortable, forget our mission, let God fall into the steady background of our lives. We are where we're supposed to be, right? Look, we're even attending a Bible study. But we still have a mission. As Jesus said to St. Francis, rebuild my church. Love, live, and teach the gospel of Jesus so we can be that city on a hill, that light to the nations. We are called to prepare the way of the Lord so that he can come into our own hearts and lives into the hearts and lives of everyone around us. Let's look at our handouts, and we're going to start to get a handle on this time period. There's about a hundred years of history right here in this cartoon. This shows the return from exile. There are three waves of returning exiles, one led by Zerubbabel, one by Ezra, and one by Nehemiah. Zerubbabel comes first, right after that decree of King Cyrus allowing the Jews to return home. The Jews start to rebuild the temple. See the box with the columns, the little gold flowers on top, surrounded by scaffolding. But then you've got the little man wearing a loincloth that comes up and shouts, hey, they can't do that. He is a Samaritan. He's not a good Samaritan. <laughs> so, because of politics, work on the temple comes to a halt for 15 years. Then come the prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, preaching, Thus saith the Lord, build the temple. 
and the temple is completed. This is in the time of King Darius. Next, you've got the Persian king Xerxes with Queen Esther next to him pleading for the lives of her people. We covered that in our last class series in uh, Tales from Exile, but that's, that's where it belongs, right here. Then you get King Artaxerxes. This is some 80 years after Zerubbabel, after the first return from exile. Ezra leads a group of exiles home and preaches the law to the people. In particular, he preaches no foreign wives. Then about 15 years later, Nehemiah leads a group of exiles home and rebuilds the walls of Jerusalem. They build with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other because they still face major opposition from the Samaritans. You see that tiny Samaritan scowling with a sword standing right next to the city? And despite all that, Nehemiah and his crew finished rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem in a mere 52 days, according to the writing on that arch. There you go. There's a hundred years of history in one picture. <laughs> Any questions? Did you draw this cartoon? No, no. I found it on the internet and went, oh, I've got to use this. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a look at the syllabus. That's the handout with the three pictures at the bottom. You've got Ezra there dressed in yellow, preaching the law to the people. You've got Nehemiah there shouting at everyone to rebuild the wall. And below that, you've got the Maccabees all put together in one nice picture. It shows the, the rededication of the temple with rejoicing and the menorah. And back behind there, you've got a battle going on with archers and cavalry and elephants. Let's see the syllabus. This week, we have Ezra. Next week, we've got Nehemiah. Those are the two history books that back to back tell us about the return from exile. Then in week three, we're going to cover the post-exilic prophets. There's three prophets from this time period, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. They're also the last three books in the Old Testament. Zechariah is long and the most interesting, 14 chapters. Haggai and Malachi are short, two and three chapters respectively. Uh, we saw Haggai and Zechariah in our cartoon picture urging people to rebuild the temple. That's what they say in their books. Zechariah also has wild visions about absolutely everything, including the upcoming Messiah. We'll spend some time with him in week three. The third prophet, Malachi, writes around the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, 80 years later, and issues a call to repentance, especially for the priests and Levites. Sorry, Malachi, we probably won't be spending as much time with you. Then in week four, we jump ahead nearly 300 years to the Maccabees. If you're familiar with the story of the Maccabees, this gets fun. First and second Maccabees are both history books. They're not chronological. It's not first Maccabees, then second Maccabees, the way you'd expect it to be. Instead, they cover the same material in different ways. First Maccabees gives us the big picture from Alexander the Great all the way forward to the alliance with the Roman Empire. Then, 2 Maccabees focuses in on just the seven years of the Maccabean Revolt, and it tells all the gripping heroic stories of faith under persecution, uh, the story of the mother and her seven sons that are martyred, the vision of the prophet Jeremiah handing Judah Maccabee a sword, and so on and so forth. Uh, then, go ahead and turn to your timeline, and I recommend you just take a minute and stare at that. That's the whole story I just told you, plus a few more details on the Maccabees. Note the big four sections. We just came out of Babylonian rule, the exile. We're coming into Persian rule, return from exile. In weeks four and five, we'll have Greek rule, the Maccabean revolt. Going into Roman rule, the coming of Christ. Uh, first, Maccabees starts to cover relations with Rome, but no, none of them go right up into when Rome actually actually uh, rules Judea. That's the Gospels. Yeah, I realized that the Tales from Exile was a pretty good Lenten book and a pretty good Lenten series. And Return from Exile is a, a pretty natural Easter series. It worked out well. <laughs>